All right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richie to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. This bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. The paper's rougher around the writing. The paper's moist here. Very light stain, barely visible. And the smell reminds me of something. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Someone's picked some lemons. I'd be surprised if my mother didn't help herself to a few. She was always going on about the surprising properties of lemons. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She applied a liquid to the book. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? Secret writing. Many people use this method for their secret correspondences. Light the flame and the ink appears. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. 
What is my mother trying to tell me? If you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. A few leaves out of an old encyclopedia. Devil's Thorn. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your eye? I had a bad fall. Looks more like a punch to me. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait, there must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. 
It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've, I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Elizabeth, confide. Fighting in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be healed as if by magic? That it will bring my smile back or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, 
and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Well, how very Exactly. Huh. Peru looks totally out of place here. He's counting the ten sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution ah. gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French mm -hmm. are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, oh, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity, oh. typically French. The Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule, but I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Thank you, Timmy Lawrence. What do you think of Volner? The Prussian king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Please, Peter. <laughs> He's certainly well connected and in high places. Surprising. No one appears to know him. No one knows me, and yet here I am. Quite so. And you, sir. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. 
He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannons. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Ah, you are right. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. <laughs> Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. <laughs> <laughs>